Hey everybody, it's Dean Z speaking to you today from Jeffries Hall at the University of Michigan Law School. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk about deferrals, which is when you ask to come to law school, not in the year that you're applying, but in a future year or even two years sometimes. So you're applying for, you know, in the 2022 admission season, but you say, I don't want to come until 2023 or whenever. So I want to talk about, really want to focus on the candidate's perspective in talking about this, like when does it make sense and when does it not make sense for the candidate to get a deferral. But to begin, I want to talk about there's three different postures you can be in when you're requesting a deferral, and then two different perspectives. There's the candidates and also the schools. So even though I want to focus on the candidate's perspective, I'm going to talk at the beginning a lot about the school's perspective. So you can just be bearing that in mind if you're thinking about pursuing a deferral. And you can, it's always helpful to have like what's the other party thinking about when you're asking for something. Before we start about any of this, though, I want to talk about one category of deferral that I'm not really thinking about, which are emergency deferrals. Like, you have committed to come to the University of Michigan Law School in fall 2022, and then something happens during the summer. You get, you get sick, or a family member has a crisis arise, or you, you have trouble getting your visa, or whatever it is. Something that really makes it impossible for you to enroll in 2022 as you had always planned. Schools in that scenario are going to be much... I'm, I, sh I feel weird speaking for other schools, but I suspect that every school is going to be very open to considering that request and granting that request because it, you have no choice. And it isn't, it isn't something that you're, uh, you've planned out and, and changed your mind about. It is something that just threw itself in front of you and you can't avoid it. So I'm not really talking about that. It's its own thing and doesn't really uh, pertain to what I'm going to talk about today. So I said there are three postures you could be in. One is you've been admitted, but you haven't yet made a decision about where you're going to enroll. One is you were admitted and you made the decision, so you've already committed to a school. And then the third is you're on the wait list. OK, why? Let's start with that last one, the wait list. Wait list is, uh, you know, your incentive as a candidate is to try to get in to, to whatever your dream school is. And it's sort of like an early, early, early decision program. So you have to be really sure that this is the school that you want. And you have to be uh, really sure that you want to go to law school. I'll get into that more in a moment. But being on the wait list is, you know, it, it, it's your opportunity to actually get in your foot in the door in the school. In admission, if you're admitted or you're already committed, it's a different scenario, of course. You're already sure that you can get into this school, um, and so it's different considerations pertain. What's the school's perspective on this? If you're an admitted student, they may think, well, I, we already liked you. You were a good candidate, and now you're going to be perhaps an even better candidate because of whatever it is you have planned during that year. So they'll be focused on what is it you actually intend to do. The other thing that they will be thinking about is, are we pretty sure you will enroll in the year that you say you're going to enroll? Like, what is it you're doing? And is there an obvious end date? Or is it something that might just keep going on and on and on and you're going to want multiple deferrals? The latter is not great for schools. So that's something to be, bear in mind. If you're already committed, same considerations pertain there. You know, good to great candidate. And then do we think you'll enroll? Uh, but then there's another consideration too, which is, the enrolling class size. So if you've already committed, a school is counting on you. Some schools typically over-enroll a little bit because they expect a certain amount of melt during the summer. So they're expecting to have some deferrals. So they may be very open-armed about your request to come in another year because they're counting on that. Other schools, on the other hand, are sort of a just-in-time delivery kind of situation where they have exactly the school, uh, I'm sorry, they have exactly the class size that they want. Uh, and if you withdraw, then they have to find somebody on the wait list, and maybe they don't want to do that. So that's going to affect the way a school uh, approaches this. Uh, and then finally, for the wait list, they, there's also an enrollment management consideration there. All the same considerations apply as we already discussed. Good to great. Will you show up? But then there's also uh, how many people do they want to have admitted for their next year's class before that season even begins. 
it's sort of a balance. On the one hand, it's nice for a school to already have some people that they know they are counting on. Uh, but on the other, they don't want to have get too far out over their skis and you know have half of their class admitted as deferral. So there's uh, there's a balance there that a given school is going to have to strike, and it's hard for you as a candidate to know what that is. But it's worth keeping in mind uh, as just understanding where the school is coming from. Now let's focus on you, the candidate, which is at the heart of what I want to talk about. There's sort of two different models for why you might request a deferral. One is um, what I think of as sort of like a developmental model, and one is what I think of as a, as a delay model. I'm going to talk about delay first. Delaying is, I'm not completely sure I want to go to law school, or I'm not completely sure I want to go to this law school. Uh, I think I could do better. This was a rough admission season, and this school's OK, but I really wanted to go to someplace else. If that's what you're thinking, I'm going to say don't defer. Don't go to law school this year, but don't defer. Because when you're deferring, you are committing to a school. Schools will have different policies about what they expect from you. Some, some schools require you to withdraw from all other schools and not to apply to any other school, and they won't budge on that. Now, if you've made that commitment, you obviously can't serve the interest of, I wanted to go to a different school. So, uh, you, I mean, you could, you could do it, and then you could break your commitment, but we frown on that. That's not a great thing to do if you're going to be a lawyer, try to get out of that habit. I understand, too, though, the desire to have like a bird in the hand. I get where you're coming from on that, but it's just bad form. Just take the risk, have the confidence in yourself, and, uh, you know, hard choices. But you, nobody ever, if you're thinking you want to delay because you're of un, some uncertainty about what's the plan, uh, listen to that. No one ever regretted taking a little more time before going to law school. And there are plenty of people who come when they're not listening to that inter internal voice saying, I'm not quite ready. And then they do regret it. And it's very, very hard to get off of the law school train once you start. It's just, psychologically really hard to step away and take a year off and, and do something else. And, and, it can, and it can affect the way um, your career plans go, too. And employers might view you with some skepticism if you, if you, thought, if you tell them, well, I took a year off because I wasn't sure if I was into law school, but now I've decided I am. That's something that you have to explain, and it's just easier not to have to do that. It's easier to just get all that out of the way before you start at law school. OK, I think I have adequately covered the delaying mentality uh, approach to things. So let's talk about development. That would be, you're sure you want to be a lawyer. You're sure you're happy with the school you have as an option. But you have some opportunity that has crossed your path that you think will make you a better law student, a better lawyer down the road, and just you know, perhaps more developed as a human being generally. Any of those are, are valid reasons for wanting to take a deferral and, and, and make a lot of sense. So you want to be able to articulate that, explain that, and make the case to a school. Because that's good for you. And schools sh should want that if that, if, that is, if that is indeed the reason you are doing this. Uh, like I said at the very beginning, they already thought you were a good candidate. They admitted you. And now you're going to do something that makes you an even better candidate, someone who they're going to be even more excited to have walking their hallways in a given year. So and that will make and, as I, and that will perhaps enhance your job prospects down the line and just enhance your ability to be um, learning in law school. So that makes a lot of sense to me. But there are still considerations that you have to take into account that might make it not make sense for you. So there's two things you should take into account that both have to do with money. One is opportunity costs. People often will tell us, I'm, I don't have the money to go to law school, or I'm not quite as comfortable financially as I want to be, so I want to continue working for a year and saving, and, and then I will be ready to go. I get that, and I, I can understand uh, wanting that security, and I did, actually did something similar myself. But from an economic perspective, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Going to law school will enhance your earning ability. You will be almost, in almost all cases, making more as a lawyer, even if you're doing a relatively low paying law job, than you would be earning with just a bachelor's degree. So the logic isn't quite there. The other financial consideration, though, is scholarships. 
Uh, some schools, if you've gotten a scholarship, some schools, if they defer you, will also defer the scholarship, and some won't. If they won't, then you're talking about a lot of financial uncertainty. You just don't know what the next year will bring in terms of their um, offer to you. And that's, so that's a pretty big risk. But even if they will defer the scholarship, you have to recognize that even in a year with very low infa inflation, tuition always goes up. And the, the scholarship you were given this year will be, in real terms, worth less in a future year because tuition will be more, everything will be more, particularly this year where we're actually seeing some really serious inflation. So you gotta think about that. Does that make sense for you financially? It's, it's a trade-off that you ha only you can really figure out what makes sense there, but you need to be thinking about that. That's, as I said, trying to think about all this from the candidate's point of view, things you should be thinking about and, and exploring before you make the request. Now, what is the likelihood that a school will grant your deferral? As I said at the top, there's a lot of considerations that a school has, and it's really gonna depend on the individual school, what their policies are, what their appetite is for taking deferrals. So I can't really predict how likely it is. But if, if you've really taken the time to self-assess and think it's the best course for you, then there is no reason not to ask. And if you actually need some help walking through these considerations, you can talk to the school about that too, and they will be, I think, very willing to kind of counsel you and help you think about what is the right move for you. Okay, now let's move to the language portion of our show. I want to talk about the word segue. I love that word. It's an Italian word. It means to follow. It comes from, I think it was originally used mostly in a musical context. So in, in a score, one piece of, you know, one movement immediately follows another movement. But it is also, as you may perhaps no, the name, uh, the trademark name of a product called a Segway, which is uh, the little thing you ride on with the handles like that the mall cop had in that movie that I can't remember the name of. RIP, by the way, because it stopped existing at some point during the pandemic after like 21 years. So let's take a moment to be sad about the absence of Segways. But anyway, the two words, although uh, very similar in meaning, and I'm sure the Segway people with the product very cleverly uh, were thinking, I think, about the Italian word when they named their product, but they spell it, the product is spelled S-E-G-W-A-Y, which to American eyes is very logical. Segway, spelled exactly like how it sounds. But the word that we use uh, in writing is the, an Italian word, so it's spelled S-E-G-U-E, -E, which to you know, English speaking eyes looks like segu or something. And so I think people read it, they don't even know what it, you know, that they're reading the word segue. And we get so many essays where the segue has been spelled like the product. And I guess it just doesn't get picked up in spell check because it is an actual word, even though it is a product name and not a, an English word. So you just be, gotta be careful about that because when we read uh, segue the product, when you meant segue the Italian word, it is distracting and we immediately picture you, you know, tooling all over on, on one of those slightly goofy modes of transportation. So you don't wanna do that. You don't want people to take, be taken out of your writing by a misspelling. So just word to the wise on that. All right, that's all I got. So please, please leave your comments and questions below. We really love to see them. Or send us an email to law.jd.admissions at umich.edu and put the log in the subject line. Other than that, all I want to say is thank you, as always, so much to Dustin for his patience and support, as well as to everybody in the admissions office who's so full of good ideas and helps me talk through what I want to say for these. Uh, then, last but not least, wherever you go, go blue. <laughs>